search thrift stores, Goodwills, garage sales, and more for possible treasures. Then I decide whether to purchase or pass. Watch what I do and decide for yourself. Would you buy it? All right, welcome to a special episode of Why Buy 2020 Top 10 Losers. Um, it's funner to fo- funner, more enjoyable to focus on uh, you know things that go well, but things don't always go well. And so this is really the top 10 uh, things that didn't sell, the biggest losers from 2020. That being said, I have to say we don't put, we're not big risk takers. So when you look at this list, I don't think there's anything on this list that we probably paid more than four or five bucks for. So, but what I think this list is illustrative of is the mistakes that you can make. Uh, Letting nostalgia get, you know, blind you. Um, looking at one listing on eBay that sold for a ton when the other 99 sold for nothing. So uh, it's kind of fun to look at that and, and hopefully learn something. So enjoy the video. So number 10 is a vintage 1959 Dinah and George Montgomery uh, paper doll set. There's also one from Annette Funicello. Uh, I bought this at a garage sale. Uh, I, I only paid a buck. And so, I mean, obviously, again, it's no big loss. But the issue with this is that the condition was horrible. So, I mean, George has lost his head. Uh, Dinah has had a visit from Tanya Harding. You know, she's gotten cracked upside the the knee. Um, and there's some real, you know, I mean, they're just terrible. Uh, the dresses are all wrinkled up and stuff. I, I just felt sentimental for these things when I saw them. And, and I should have just put them in recycling, but I just could not do it. I just couldn't put them in recycling. So I, you know, have them, have had them up for sale and I'm trying to sell them for like nine bucks and 25 cents plus shipping. And I, I've had a bunch of views, but no, no takers. I, I'm, I'm basically looking for a sympathy buy. Um, but like I said, I just cannot recycle them. So hopefully somebody will buy them. So number nine is some vintage Clementoni Disney uh, block puzzles. Uh, they are six puzzles in one because they're all in blocks. You got to kind of turn them to the right side and get six different puzzles. Uh, I felt sure that these were going to be worth something. You know, I think I can you know, get taken over by certain names and certain brands, and Disney's one of them. So vintage Disney seemed like a sure winner. They were complete. Uh, the little pictures that showed you what the puzzles were were there. So I thought, oh, these have got to be worth something. Um, I pay, And again, I didn't pay much for them. I, I only paid uh, like four bucks for them. But it's just nobody's, nobody wants them. And, and so I've been trying to sell them for 17 I think I, I forget what I started at, but uh, I'm selling them currently at seventeen fifty, and just nobody wants them. So sometimes Disney is not a winner. So number eight is something where sometimes you venture outside of your knowledge base and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, I bought some manga books or manga books, manga books, and had a, didn't know anything about them, but had a sense they were worth something. And I probably made a profit about 40 bucks on it. Uh, I was at a garage sale and I saw these things. Some relatively young kid was selling them. Yokai watch, their watches and their medals and there's a binder and there's a book. Uh, the watches worked and made noises and flashes. Uh, I said, well, this is kind of like Pokemon. This is kind of like Pikachu and crap, none of which I know anything about, but I thought they might be, you know, might sell. I kind of looked them up. I thought they might be worth something. I paid four bucks. They are unsold. Uh, trying to get 32 bucks for them. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you win when you stray outside your knowledge base. Sometimes you don't. So number seven is an instance when nostalgia leads you down the bad pathway. Uh, I was at a garage sale. This is actually where I got uh, an Eldon uh, lot that sold and made a profit of like 100. That's in a whole different video. Look for a link below. Uh, I had had some of these books as a kid. And so when I saw the bunny um, and I saw, I think it was, you know, uh, Donald Duck and Bambi and stuff. I mean, oh my gosh, just tugged a heartstring. Uh, They were actually in pretty poor condition, Um, but there were so many of them. I said, oh, they got to be worth something. Uh, I I paid about five bucks for the lot, and they've been sitting unsold for 17 bucks. Um, Again, the the poor condition. Sometimes you get get lost in in the, the idea of what they are, but people don't generally want things in such poor condition, and some of these are really bad. So, eh, 
whatever. It was fun looking at them, and I actually kept one for myself. So, you know, it's all right. So this is another instance of nostalgia clouding your judgment. So this is a 1983 Sears catalog, and if it was a Christmas catalog, it would absolutely be a winner. Those things can go for 40 50 bucks or more. Uh, but this is a midwinter catalog from the Midwest. So, you know, uh, it totally loses value. But, you know, you look at some of these things and you just, you know, you long for some of these outfits. Um, the picture here is of some Houston Oilers jackets that as a kid, I, I would have murdered people for this. I would, And so just to have a picture of it was just sweetness. Uh, we won't talk about the bra ads and that part of my sexual development, which is obviously stunted. Um, but I, I didn't pay a lot for it. I paid 50 cents. So again, calling it a loser is sort of silly. But uh, it's been sitting, sitting for a long time, trying to sell it at fifteen fifty. So uh, it's, it's worth 50 cents for me to look and see that picture, that, that Oilers jacket. So uh, worth it in that way. So number five is a Napoleon Dynamite magnetic board. And I thought, Napoleon Dynamite, what's cooler than that? I mean, that it is funny as hell movie. There's a lot of hipsters who love this crap. Um, yeah, the board's a little warped and stuff, but I thought for sure it would sell. Uh, I paid a big 50 cents for it, and it, it just it won't sell. And, and so, I don't know. So, this is some, At some point, somebody's going to wise up and buy this thing. And, and did I mention the corduroy frames and, and the fact that they has the little sayings that you can kind of move around? This is, this is an anomaly. This should be on my top seller list. So this is number four. And let's see if I can pronounce it. Antiologia Chronologica Napoleotena Robert Marola. Uh, it's uh, records. They're record sets. Um, no clue what they are. They're from Italy. And they're these lovely uh, and really nice condition records. Uh, I don't know what they are. I never actually played them because I didn't want to wreck them on my subpar uh, record player. Uh, this was a, a thrift store find. And I saw one of them, one that had sold for close to $100, and, and I saw that and I got eight of them. Um, they were in set boxes. There were two missing. There should be 12. But I thought, oh, my God, this is going to this is gonna be that. I'm going to finally beat my son's uh, top sell of his Leica camera. But I can't get rid of these things. Um, again, so I got uh, eight, uh, 10 of them. I start. I forget. I started trying to sell them at auction and a whole bunch of other things, and I got them down to ninety-seven fifty. And I just nobody wants them. Uh, but they're they're beautiful. I probably should listen to them at this point. So uh, again, sometimes you get fooled. There's some moron out there. One moron out there who was willing to pay a hundred dollars for one of these. But unfortunately, there's no other idiots who will buy mine. So number three is this uh, Lowe's Casino Gambling Game Set. Uh, it's an eight in one. There's eight different games. It's from about 1944. Um, it was complete when I found it in a thrift store. It had all the pieces. It was in, you know, generally good condition. Not rips, tears. Didn't smell, you know, like, you know, damp grandma's underwear. Um, so I thought, and I think I saw one that was either trying to be sold or did sell for 75, 85 bucks. This has been sitting here, unsold, lower in the price, lower in the price, lower in the price, and it's now at twenty-seven fifty, and again can't give it away. Somebody, somebody should buy it. So number two is a Montgomery Ward Electronic One Vintage Calculator, and there's a story to this. And I actually ended up selling this. It took me about two years. I paid four bucks for it. I sold it for about eleven dollar profit. But th there's a, a moment in here when I was delusionally thinking this would sell for hundreds. So th it was fun buying it, actually. I was at a garage sale. I saw it. Again, there's something about vintage computers with those kind of old LED, you know, red or green screens. The guy who bought it told me the story about how his family had to, like, save up money to buy this when he was a, a kid in the colleges in the 60s. Um, they had to invest $65 in it. And, and mind you, the damn thing only adds, subtracts, divides, and multiplies. Nothing else. Um, so that was an awesome story. So I bought it, and it was in the box uh, in the styrofoam and stuff like that. Sat there, sat there, sat there, didn't sell. And I don't remember what led me to at some point um, read about the fact that it had a Mostec, uh 5010P chip in it. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but what I read was that this was, uh, that chip was a calculator in the chip, and it was like the first one. 
and and somebody on uh, eBay sold the chip by itself for tons of money and now I'm thinking holy crap if I can verify that my calculator has this chip I am in the money so I took the damn thing apart uh, and indeed it has this Mostec chip and I'm like oh my god so I put it up for auction I'm all excited I can't believe what it's going to sell for nothing and so I lower the auction price nothing and again so finally uh, you know, I, I, I sold like for 15 bucks. I, I don't understand people. Um, it should be worth it. And I'm still ticked off that somebody didn't pay me like $1,000 for it. But um, it was cool and it was kind of fun. So my number one loser, and again, it's not a horrible loser, is a Bina 23B Harmonium. Uh, you don't know what that is? Well, I, I did not either when I purchased it. So uh, this was actually, we got this after a three-hour trip in the heart of the pandemic to Brooklyn uh, to an electronics recycling facility. Yeah, this is not electronics. I know that, but it was there. Uh, I looked at it and said, holy crap, I'll take it. I, I don't even remember exactly what I paid for it. I think 10 15 maybe 20 bucks. Um, brought it home. And, and the condition is not perfect. Some of the stoppers, those silver stoppers, are not quite right. So I'm going to play some video now or let you hear the video of this thing actually working. Clearly, I'm not a musician. Clearly, I don't know what I was doing. But you can hear it. Get a sense of what it is. So it's cool, right? Uh, it's big. It's kind of fragile. So I decided to try to sell it uh, on Facebook Marketplace. Um, again, if you look on eBay, these things sell for three, four hundred dollars. Um, but again, there's variations and condition issues. So I didn't think I was going to get that. Um, I think I listed it for two, three hundred. People kept. I got a number of contacts, believe it or not. Um, it does seem like it's an instrument, maybe from India or something. Um, and I got a number of offers, but nobody wanted to pay anywhere near what I was asking and and I just wasn't willing to sell it and so it I continue to have it sit unsold in my basement at some point I will put it on eBay or do something with it because uh, it, it's cool and somebody does want it but for now it's it is my biggest my biggest loser all right hope you enjoyed my mistakes hope you could laugh at me and make fun of me um, but uh, we have two other videos out there, two other special Why Buy videos. One is the top 10 profits from 2020, and one is the top 10 kind of most enjoyable, kind of fun, quirky finds as well. So check those out, and think about subscribing. Thanks for watching.